said it This bed never felt so cold And even though we're both hard-headed I kinda wish that we'd both forget it But we're bad at letting things go We're up, we're down No middle ground You don't wanna talk, I put up a wall You don't wanna leave me. I don't feel like crying tonight Picking a side, losing our minds Just so we can say we were right Baby, what for? I don't feel like fighting Cause we're making it worse Throwing my words, crossing the line Just so we can say we were right Baby, what for? I don't feel like fighting anymore I let it go too far, I knew it Escalated over something so stupid This room never felt so dark It's like we're losing Makes me wonder if we'll ever get through it I just wanna lay in your arms We're bitter, we're sweet We're too extreme To ask you the one thing that's on my mind Is it too good to be true for all my life? Can nobody love me like you? Can somebody please tell me who? Nobody could love me like you
I remember the night back in late November. I was out in the cold, I was alone praying for answers. The storm was loud, but it couldn't tell me nothing. The fire was wild, but it just left me struggling. You're moving the stillness, you're moving the stillness. Closing the distance, now I can feel it. Now I can feel ya. Your voice isn't hidden, your voice isn't hidden. I just gotta listen. Listen. I hear you whisper. For you, trying to find the courage uh, to want to regret not taking the step toward my purpose. Uh, I'm waking up, taking a new perspective. Uh, the night was long until I got the message. You're moving the stillness, you're moving the stillness, closing the distance. Now I can feel it, now I can feel ya. Your voice isn't hidden, your voice isn't hidden. I just gotta listen. Listen. I hear I will not fear, I know you're right here No matter where I go, I know I will never be alone And I will not fear, I know you're right here No matter where I go, I know I will never be alone Oh, I know I will never be alone
Team Street Live. Cecile, what happened to you? Hey, Brian. What did you do with Cecile? I'm not Cecile. I'm Aaron. It's great to have you with us, Aaron. It's really good to be here. So excited. Yeah, it's so great to be here. You may know already, but I actually live in Spain. And, but it's so great to be here in Germany with you all. And great to be a part of an international community. Now, you may already know, but today's theme is called Valleys. And so we've been exploring like, the, the difficult times, the hardships in our lives but also how we find God there and what, how he can use those things for our good and for the good of others. But before we get into that, we're going to play a game, right? That's right. We're going to play a pronunciation game. Okay, cool. I know you live in Spain, but you are an English speaker, natural-born English speaker. I am. But we're going to have five different words from five different languages. Okay. And the words will appear on the screen, and we have to pronounce it, but then also guess what it means. All right, sounds good. Do you want to start us off? Sure. The first word is from Malaysia. Malaysia. Okay, here we go. Bibola Daging. Bibola Daging? Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that sounds good. I, I don't speak Malaysian, but uh, it could be it. Yeah. All right. What do you think it means? Bibola Daging. I think it's the exhaust pipe of a car. Ooh. Well, actually, the meaning is meatball. Oh, close. Pretty close. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> All right, Brian, how's your Spanish? Well, my Spanish is uh, not really... Uh, no comprendo, no comprendo. Oh, that's pretty good. Mm. All right, give it a go. Can you see the word? Let's see here. Um, ornitorinco? Almost, a little bit more. <laughs> that's it. Again? Ornitorinco? That's pretty good. It's not bad. All right, what do you think it is? Uh, well, rinco... Can I guess it can mean something like round. Is it like a roundabout? That's close as well. It's actually a platypus. What is a platypus? A platypus is a weird animal. It's kind of like a duck has a big beak and it swims. Hmm. Well, I have a Dutch word for you. All right. Do you want to give it a try? I'll give it my best shot. Here we go. Cow gone balin automat. Oh, you did a good job. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. What do you All think right. it means? Cow balin. Is it a butterfly? No, it's definitely not a budding fly, butterfly. It's actually a chewing gum machine. A chewing gum machine? Yeah. All right. That wasn't very close. Long word for just a small piece of chewing gum. All right. Now, Brian, you studied at Bible school, right? I did, yes. How's the Hebrew? Well, I had a few classes in Hebrew. Okay. So, uh, yeah. All right. Can you see the word on the screen? Oh, yes. I can see that word. Okay. I know I'm supposed to read it from the right to the left. That's right. Uh, normally, you have like the English letters, but uh, let's see here, or not the English letters, but let me give it a try. That, is that Nadik? Ne, Natik? Sure, why not? That sounds good. All right, what do you think it means? Well, it's probably something biblical since uh, the Bible is written in Hebrew. 
Uh, does it mean like, is it like a city? Maybe like Jerusalem or something? It's close. It's actually orange juice. <laughs> oh, orange juice. <laughs> That's not biblical at all. All right. All right, the last word, uh, it's actually from Zulu. Any okay. experience with that language? No experience whatsoever. We'll give it a try. Here we go. Hambakaya. Hambakaya. Hambakaya? That sounds good to me. All right. What, what do you do think, think it means? Hambakaya. It sounds like Hakuna Matata. Yeah. Maybe like, don't worry, life's going to be great, life's good. Yeah, like is it Hakuna Matata. No, it's actually not. It actually means go home. Go home. All right. That's nice. So, yeah. All right. Well, we also want to know uh, what you think of these words, or maybe you can put words in the comments of your own language, and then we can all try to pronounce it. Exactly. It's so good to be part of an international community and speak so many different languages, right? And now we're going to be uh, going over to the summary message of valleys. Wow, that was such a fun game to play together. We're going to chat a little bit about valleys. The room we're discussing today is the basement. What do you think about when you hear the word basement? Sure, when I think about basements, a bit like Ridge, I think of spiders. Hmm. And we can also compare this as a place in our heart. You know, the basement is like a dark place. And if you've ever gone down to a basement as a, as a child, it can be like a bit scary, but we can also compare that to our lives. Exactly. And a basement is where you store things, right? And you hide things. It's when we think about this, these areas in our lives of where we hide things, you know, the dark experiences in our lives that often we feel shame about, right? Exactly. And Jesus even talked about it. Mm -hmm. He said in John chapter 16, verse 33, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, tribulation means trouble or suffering. But Aaron, do Christians have trials and tribulations? Unfortunately, yes. Are we not set free from that? We're not. We're actually promised that. We're, we're promised that we will have... We will have tribulations and troubles. Have you ever experienced that in your life? I know you shared something earlier. Yeah, I mean, as, I, as I've been sharing this week, my childhood years and adolescence were, were quite difficult, really. Is there something that uh, you did that helped you grow uh, stronger in your faith? Sure. I mean, one thing, I was surrounded by a great youth group in my church. Um, it's just, you know, spiritual disciplines, like reading the word, learning... Uh, about who God is, what he's like, and then I was able to learn my identity as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's really uh, important, you know. Hmm. We can have difficult moments in our lives as well, and we can feel so alone. And it's good to recognize that. Even as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we don't need to have it all together, and sometimes we go through really difficult periods in our life hmm. where it even may feel that God is not there. Yeah. Have you ever experienced that? Definitely. Yeah, in the darkest times... Uh, it's often felt like God wasn't even there, right? And it's those times where our faith is tested and we have to believe and trust that God is real and that he's, he's with us, right? And I think that's also why it's so important that we let Jesus into the room of our basement. Yeah. Since it's such a dark place and you want to hide things, like you said, you know, Jesus is the light that comes in. Exactly. But that also means that some areas are going to be exposed. Yeah. Well, may I ask you, is Jesus in the room of the basement in your heart? Have you allowed him in to the dark places, to the things that are difficult in your life? If not, open the room of the basement. You know, it's never nice when bad things happen to us, but God is able to take the things from our basement and use them for our good. Now, when we are in the middle of difficult times, it doesn't seem like there's anything good that come out of it. Mm. but. I can even testify myself that God is able to take bad things out of our life and turn them into good things. Exactly. That's really special. Yeah. So the Bible shares a story about a man named Joseph. And he also went through some really difficult things in his life, but eventually God turned things around. Yeah. Aaron, do you know what happened in Joseph's life? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was sold as a slave by his siblings, put into prison for something that he didn't do, even betrayed by those who he helped. That's crazy to hear. Yeah. But Joseph had a really good attitude in the midst of all of these events in his life. And God brought purpose out of his pain, right? His, his suffering and his tribulations. 
Exactly. But can you imagine if that happens to you? That mm -hmm. like your siblings are selling you as a slave, your yeah. family completely writes you off. I think even some people that are watching can maybe relate to that. Not that your family has sold you as a slave, but that there's just like tension between mm. family members that you experience. Or, or like Joseph, that, that there are people that you are trying to help that are actually uh, betraying you. Mm. Or even during this whole situation with COVID-19 that we are currently dealing with, there's so many people influenced by this in a negative way. Yeah. Well, you probably figured this out, but we live in an imperfect world and we will go through difficult times. And as Christians, unfortunately, we are not exempt from that. Now, in the story of Joseph, we see that one day things changed for him. All of a sudden, he was taken out of his basement situations and he was installed as the second most important ruler of Egypt. And Joseph said something at the end of his life that I want to read to you. He said, what people intended to harm me, God intended for good mm. to accomplish what now has being done, the saving of many lives. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. God completely changed things. Yeah. And people had the wrong intentions for him. But eventually, God didn't just fix his basement situation, but he used Joseph to save the lives of others. Exactly. That's always God's yeah. intention. I'm sure Joseph was willing, right? He allowed God to do that in him, even in, the, even in prison, right? In the darkest of seasons, uh, being sold into slavery by his own family. But he stayed uh, faithful to God and willing, right? Absolutely. Willing to let God use those things for his good and the good of others. But what do we do, though, Aaron, when we are in difficult situations? Because we don't know when the day is going to come when things are going to change in our lives. Sure. Should we just, like, wait and... What should our attitude be in those times when we don't know when things are going to change? Sure. We don't always have the influence. Yeah. I think staying faithful to God, right? Like I said earlier, you know, being rooted in the Word, holding on to hope and believing that God is good and He's going to, you know, He's going to bring good out of every situation, every basement and valley situation. Absolutely. I've even experienced in my own life mm -hmm. that when I went through difficult times that that's really when your faith is being tested. Like, do you really trust God for who He is, even though you might not see Him or feel Him, or there might not even be people around you that are encouraging you? You might start to doubt your faith. Like, why is this happening to me? Did I do something? Like, why is this going on? Mm -hmm. But when you keep trust, trusting God in all these situations, there's going to come a moment when things are starting to change. Yeah. There's an amazing verse that I want to leave you with. And I think this describes really the essence of what we are talking about. In Romans chapter 5, five verse 3 to 5, it says the following. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. It's an amazing promise, right? Absolutely. It shows the process of what we sometimes can go through in our life. In difficult times, in suffering, we have to persevere. We shouldn't give up. We should keep going. Yeah. And in these moments, God is changing us on the inside. Exactly. He's changing our character. He's changing the way we are, the way we think of things but there's always a moment of hope that we can look forward to. Yeah. Aaron, do you maybe have like an encouraging word that you can share to people that are currently watching that are going through difficult times in their life that don't really know how they should continue? Yeah, I would say hold on to hope, right? There's amazing promise, you know. Um, even though tribulations, suffering is going to come, we promised it, as we've talked about, but hold on to hope, you know. Uh, get to know who God is, understand His character and who you are in His sight. You know, uh, as children of God, we're children of God. He cares for us as a loving Father. That's amazing, Aaron. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, remember that your testimony, the things that you're going through in your life and then overcoming can also be a doorway to someone else's victory. 
God can do amazing things in your life and He can do amazing things with our testimonies. At Teen Street, we like to call them true stories. Mm. So share those with others, of things that you have gone through so that other people might be encouraged as well. Well, Aaron, we talked a lot about the valleys that we can go through in our life, but there are also many people around us that go through difficult times. How should we approach those things? Yeah, I mean, there are a number of different ways to get involved, right? And as we said earlier, thinking about all the good things that God has done in our lives, the way he's transformed our lives, we want to then be thinking about the people around us that need to be led into hope, that need encouragement, that need to be served. And so one thing I thought of was random acts of kindness. Think mm. about your, your friends, family members, your neighbors. You know, who needs help? You know, who needs to be served? Uh, secondly, short-term mission trips. Have you ever done a short-term mission trip? Absolutely. Yeah? And yeah. how was that experience? Well, it's really great because you're going into an area that you've normally never been to. And although it might be difficult to relate with a different culture or language, you're able to meet the needs of other people. Exactly. And that's just an amazing thing to do. We're blessed to be a blessing. Exactly. And then lastly, what about Rag Race? Rag Day. Exactly, yeah. We have uh, the Rag thing going on this entire week, Racing Gift, the fundraising event of, uh, of Teen Street. And that's also an amazing way to help because we are fundraising money for people that are in, in need, for teens that are in need specifically helping those needs. That's amazing. So yeah, three ways to get involved with that. If you haven't already got involved with rag, uh, the Rag Day, the Rag Race, rag race this week, uh, the first one is sports. Grab your running shoes, grab your bike, and get people to sponsor you. Secondly, social action. Uh, you could offer to cut somebody's lawn, help an old lady with her shopping, and ask, them to, ask people to sponsor you to be doing these random acts. And then the third one is fundraising. Mm. Okay? So go through your, your wardrobe, your cupboard, uh, find all the things that you don't need anymore, maybe some old clothes or shoes that you could sell, and to raise money for people in need. You know, that sounds like an amazing thing. And we've been doing this for all week, but tomorrow is really going to be like the last final push, the big day. Yeah. And we invite all of you to be a part of it. Now, the person that raises the most money, isn't there a special prize or something? I've heard there's an amazing prize, Brian. Do you what know it what it is? Yeah, I know what it is. Do you know what it is? I do. I think they should yeah. know what it is. Well, the first place wins a trip to a teen street outside of Europe. Like That's pretty cool. Like a trip? A trip. Like including like lodging, like food, everything? I think a five-star hotel. A five-star hotel. Did you hear that? I'm not well, sure. Well, <laughs> if the T Street location is a five-star hotel, it doesn't always feel like it. Yeah, that's but, true. Uh, you'll definitely get the full experience. <laughs> exactly. So if you haven't already registered, go online, teenstreet.life, to find out all that you need to know. All right. Now, we can think of these things as acts of worship, right? When we're serving others, we can think of uh, these opportunities to serve others as acts of worship. And now we're going to go into a musical time of worship. So just where you are, let's, uh, let's prepare our hearts. I'm going to pray, okay? So we thank you, Father, for all we've, all we've learned today, all that we've heard, and all that you're, you're doing in our lives. Thank you that you can bring purpose out of our pain, and the basement and valley seasons of our lives uh, can be used by your grace uh, to transform us, to strengthen us, to make us uh, more like you, Jesus, and help us to be serving others, to be blessing others, to be witnesses of your great love to those around us. Whoa, whoa, whoa.
Wow, what an amazing time of worship, right? That was pretty awesome. Absolutely. Okay, now just like the other days, we're going to move into a time of prayer now. Uh, so we have two prayer points. The first one is inward focus. So asking God to, to help us. And then the second one is outward focus, asking God to bless those around us. Now we have two prayer points. The first one, as I said, is inward focused. So we're going to be asking God uh, about a valley season in our lives. And so talk to God about one thing that you've been going through, or maybe you're going through right now. Ask him to shine his light, to bring his truth and his peace into your heart, and to bring purpose out of the, out of the pain, out of the situation, just like he did in Joseph's life. Dear God, it can be very difficult when we're going through a trial and it can feel alone and we can feel like you are not there. But the truth is that you are always with us. Strengthen us when we're going through difficult times and we pray, Lord, that you bring good out of it even if we have no idea how that is going to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Now the second, the second point is praying for those around us. Okay, so pray for someone that you know that is maybe going through a valley season and let's ask God to help them, to bless them and to guide them to the truth and shine his light into that situation. So Father, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, God, that you've uh, brought purpose out of pain. You've shone your light into the darkest basement and valley seasons of our lives. And you, you turn all things and change all things for our good. And we want to um, pray for those people around us now, those people, uh, maybe family members or friends or neighbors who are going through a valley a uh, dark season right now, and we ask that you would uh, bring your peace, your hope, and your light into their situations. Would you bless, would you bless them? Uh, would you lead them? And we pray that they would know your, your comfort, your love, and your, your guidance in this valley season. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Great to have a time to pray together like That's this. Awesome. Hey, we've come to the end of our session today. Tomorrow is the last day and you really do not want to miss that. We hope you have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. To the modern way I'm trying to be somebody I'm not But it's not what I want 
And tell me there's another way All of the lights are chased and now faded All the cheap thrills were only time wasted Tell me why society's plan should define who I am Surely there's a high To decide who I am It never knew me anyway I'm over trying to find the next high Cause the high never lasts I'ma go another way All of the lights are chased and now faded Till it was right, the times they are changing Tell me why society's plan should define who I am Surely there's a highway